The predator. It is the engine of evolution, the driving force of adaptation. In the sunlit surface of our world, we know its form. We see it in the hydrodynamic perfection of the great white shark, a torpedo of muscle and teeth. We see it in the explosive speed of the tuna and the cooperative, strategic genius of the orca. These are the apex designs of a world defined by light, speed, and power. They are familiar, magnificent, and understandable. This is our baseline for what a predator should be. But the sunlit zone is just a thin, fragile ceiling on a vast, dark empire that makes up 95% of the habitable space on our planet. As we descend past the reach of the sun into a realm of crushing pressure and eternal night, the familiar rules of predation are broken. The elegant blueprint of the surface predator is twisted, warped, and reimagined into forms of profound and terrifying strangeness. This is a journey into the abyss to understand why predators get creepier the deeper you go. Our descent begins into the twilight zone, the mesopelagic. Here, from 600 to 3,000 feet down, the sun is a fading ghost. The pressure builds and the temperature plummets. In this world of perpetual dusk, the old strategies of chasing down prey begin to fail. Energy is precious, and a new set of tools is required for survival. The predators here are the first step into the bazaar. Meet the viperfish. This is where the word creepy begins to feel inadequate. The viperfish is a hunter, and its primary weapon is its teeth. They are so long, so disproportionately huge, that they don't fit inside its mouth. When its jaw is closed, the lower fangs curve back up past its own eyes. To even swallow its prey, its skull is hinged, allowing it to pivot its head up and open its jaw to an incredible degree. It is a living trap of needle-sharp fangs, often combined with a bioluminescent lure on its dorsal spine to attract its victims. Here, too, we find the fang tooth. While small, it holds the record for the largest teeth in the ocean relative to its body size. Its lower fangs are so long that it has evolved two special sockets on either side of its brain for the teeth to slide into when its mouth is closed, preventing it from impaling itself. It is a creature whose own weapons are so extreme, its body had to evolve a safety mechanism just to contain them. And then there is the dragonfish. It is a long, black, eel-like predator with a bioluminescent lure on its chin. But it has a secret weapon that elevates it to another level of predatory sophistication. Most bioluminescence in the deep sea is blue or green. The dragonfish, however, has a second light-producing organ under its eye that can produce red light. This is a profound advantage because most deep-sea creatures have evolved to see blue light and are physically incapable of seeing red. The dragonfish has, in effect, developed an invisible infrared sniper scope. It can illuminate its prey with a red light that the prey cannot see, allowing it to hunt with total stealth in the crushing dark. Now we leave the last vestiges of sunlight behind and enter the midnight zone, the bathypelagic. We are over 3,000 feet down. The darkness is absolute. The pressure is immense, enough to crush a military submarine. And food is incredibly scarce. Life here is a waiting game, played in total blackness. To survive here, the predators have become monsters. This is the realm of the anglerfish. It is perhaps the most iconic monster of the deep. It has a massive, cavernous mouth filled with translucent needle-like teeth. Its body is soft and flabby, a low-energy design for a world where every calorie counts. And then there is the feature that gives it its name, a long, fleshy filament growing from its head, at the end of which is a glowing lure. This light is not magic. It is a symbiotic relationship with bioluminescent bacteria, which the anglerfish cultivates in its personal lantern. 
In the crushing dark, the single point of light is an irresistible beacon. Smaller fish and crustaceans swim in for a closer look, and in a flash, the giant mouth opens, and they are gone. But the anglerfish's horror has another layer. The large, monstrous ones we see are all female. The males are tiny, pathetic creatures whose only purpose is to find a female. When he does, he bites her, and his body begins to physically fuse with hers. His circulatory systems merge, his eyes and internal organs wither away until he is nothing more than a parasitic pair of testes providing sperm on demand. It is a grotesque and permanent act of reproduction. For a truly alien body plan, we meet the gulper eel. Also known as the pelican eel, this creature is little more than a giant mouth attached to a long, whip-like tail. Its jaw is loosely hinged and can unhinge to an incredible degree allowing it to swallow prey much larger than itself. Its stomach can also stretch to accommodate these rare, oversized meals. It is the ultimate adaptation for a world where you have to be able... able to eat whatever you are lucky enough to find, no matter the size. And then there is the vampire squid. It is a living fossil, a creature that is not a true squid or octopus, but the last surviving member of its own ancient order. It lives in the oxygen minimum zone, a layer of water so devoid of oxygen that most other complex animals cannot survive there. It has a black, webbed cloak, red eyes, and defends itself not by squirting ink, but by turning itself inside out into a ball of spines and releasing a cloud of bioluminescent mucus. It does not hunt live prey in the traditional sense. It is a detritivore, using long, sticky filaments to catch marine snow drifting down from above. It is a predator of the dead, a survivor in a world of suffocation. Finally, we descend into the abyss below 13,000 feet. The pressure here can exceed 600 times that at the surface. The water is just above freezing. Here, we find the true titans of the deep. This is the realm of the giant squid. For centuries, it was a myth, a legend of sea monsters and krakens. Now, we know it is real. It can grow up to 40 feet long, with eyes the size of dinner plates. The largest eyes of any animal on Earth, designed to capture the faintest glimmers of bioluminescence in the total dark. Its tentacles are lined with suckers, each one ringed with sharp, serrated teeth. This is the creature that does battle with the sperm whale, the only predator large enough to hunt it, a clash of titans that happens in a world we can never see. Here too, life becomes about extreme energy conservation. The tripod fish exemplifies this. It rests on the seafloor, propped up on three long, stilt-like extensions of its fins, facing into the current, waiting for a small crustacean to drift into its mouth. It is a living statue, a hunter that has evolved to barely move at all, a masterpiece of patience in a world where waiting is the only strategy. So, why does this happen? Why this descent into monstrous forms? The answer lies in the three brutal laws of the deep sea. No light, no food, and no escape from pressure. The lack of light is the primary driver. It forced the evolution of bioluminescence, the ability to create your own light. This light is used as a lure, as a form of communication, as a defense to startle predators and as camouflage. It also drove the evolution of eyes, either making them enormous and hypersensitive, or getting rid of them entirely. The scarcity of food is the second law. In a world where your next meal might be weeks or months away, you cannot afford to be picky, and you cannot afford to waste energy. This led to the evolution of massive mouths and expandable stomachs. It also led to low-energy bodies. Deep-sea fish have watery, gelatinous flesh with very little muscle, 
because muscle requires a huge amount of calories to maintain. Their entire strategy is to sit and wait, a living trap that expends almost no energy until the moment of the strike. The final law is the immense, crushing pressure. This is why deep-sea fish look so strange when brought to the surface. Their bodies are not designed to hold their shape in our low-pressure world. They survive the pressure because they have no internal air spaces, like a swim bladder that would collapse. Their bodies are mostly water, which is incompressible. And their very proteins and enzymes are protected by special molecules called piezolites, which allow their cells to function under pressures that would destroy ours. From the sleek torpedo of the tuna to the patient tripod fish of the abyss, the journey down is a journey into a different world with a different set of rules. The predators of the deep are not monsters. They are not creepy, failed experiments. They are survivors. They are masterpieces of evolution, perfectly adapted to the most hostile environment on our planet. Their bizarre forms are not a sign of nature getting it wrong, but a testament to the incredible and sometimes terrifying power of life to find a way.